This is my vintage Ico 753, which I purchased as a kit in, uh, I think it was September 1966. And I was, um, I think, 17 years old at the time. And uh, this was a, an upgrade from the radios that I'd had previously. I had had a receiver transmitter combination, a, a Night Kit T60 transmitter, and a Knight R55A receiver. And this is this Ico was a new radio that was on the market. And um, it was a big step up for me. I didn't have very much money. I was just a teenager working at minimum wage and summer jobs, trying to earn enough money to buy my equipment. And uh, I received this uh, kit and built it. And th this is the transceiver. It's a tri-band, 20, 40, and 80 meters, and uh, single side band code, and also AM. And it comes with the came with a power supply, the 751 power supply with a built-in speaker. Uh, in reality, what I find is that the that a, a different external speaker actually works better than the small little speaker that's built into it. And one of the characteristics of the Ico 753 was that it had a tendency to drift in frequency, and um, a lot of people make fun of this transmitter, I mean this transceiver, uh, and it was poor compared to some of the transceivers that you could get at that time. Uh, among those being the Drake transceivers, the Swan transceivers, and the Collins uh, equipment being the top of the line. But for budget conscious people, especially young people, that wanted a transceiver. Transceivers for the these bands was was a new concept. Previously, people had u had to use what we call boat anchor receivers and transmitters, and um, this was getting into a new mode of communication in the ham radio world with transceivers operating on single sideband. And so this was my launch, and I I thought it was a great radio. Now to get some kind of stability in the uh, frequency you had I had to turn it on and let it warm up for a while but mine is a solid state version and more stable than the original uh, radios uh, 753s that had a uh, a tube VFO this one had the solid state VFO and was a little bit more stable but still drifted a lot and I restored it and kept it working We're on 40 meters, and I think this is a contest. Uh, well, not really a contest, but a, a thing that uh, amateurs have going on where they set up their uh, portable rigs in a national park and then make contacts with as many people as they can. And I believe that's what this is. Now, if I want to talk to him, what I need to do is to tune up my radio, and I would have to go to a different frequency to do that, but otherwise they would be hearing a tone right on top of them. So let me try to do that. I'll tune off the frequency a little bit and uh, tune up the radio and you can see how I do this. Okay, I've tuned off a little bit and then I have a tune function here. Turn the load down, peak the exciter, dip the PA tune, turn the load up,
you can't leave it in the tune position too long, especially when you're tuning up or the output tubes will overheat. So that's another little thing that you have to be careful of with these uh, older radios. Now let me see if I can get back to the frequency here. Alpha Kilo 4, Yankee, November. Alpha Kilo 4, Yankee, November. Alpha Kilowatt 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 4, Yankee, November. Roger, Roger. Roger, you're five nine in Georgia. I'm using a vintage Drifty radio. Thanks for watching my video, though, and uh, if you can like and share and watch some other uh, videos on my channel. Thank you.